Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy fruit salad. Welcome to A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten Storytime. I'm Lisa Springer, Children's Librarian at the Kate Waller Barrett Branch of the Alexandria Library, and this is my friend Alligator. Say hi, Allie. Oh, come on, you can say a better hi than that. Open up your mouth. No, why won't you open up your mouth? Oh, you're going to open up your mouth very carefully because there's something inside of it. Do you see something inside of Allie's mouth? Oh, look what Allie brought today. Allie brought a strawberry. Is that a real strawberry, Allie? No, it's just a pretend one. But we really like strawberries. Do you like berries? Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. It's berry season. So I think we're going to have some stories about berries today. You ready for that? Allie's ready. Here we go. I hope you all have a very nice time. Don and Audrey Wood are best known for their book, King Bid Goods in the Bathtub, but they've done lots of other wonderful, funny books. And this one is The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry, and The Big Hungry Bear. The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry, and The Big Hungry Bear by Don and Audrey Wood. Illustrated by Don Wood. Hello, Little Mouse. What are you doing? Oh, I see. Are you going to pick that red ripe strawberry? The Little Mouse, haven't you heard about the Big Hungry Bear? Oh, how that bear loves red ripe strawberries. The big hungry bear can smell a red ripe strawberry a mile away, especially one that has just been picked. Boom, boom, boom. The bear will tromp through the forest on his big hungry feet and sniff, 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 find the strawberry no matter where it is hidden. Where's it hidden? Can you see what Mouse did with the strawberry? Yeah, he tried to put a whole lot of dirt around it so that Bear can't find the strawberry. Or who is guarding it? Oh, well, he's got it all locked up in a chain. Will that help? <laughs> Sniff, <laughs> find the strawberry. no matter where it is hidden. Where's it hidden? Can you see what Mouse did with the strawberry? Yeah, he tried to put a whole lot of dirt around it so that Bear can't find the strawberry. Or who is guarding it? <coughs> or who is gardening? Or who is guarding it? Oh, he's got it all locked up in a chain. Will that help? Or how it is disguised. That's not much of a disguise, is it? Looks funny that way, too. I like the fact that Mouse is wearing Groucho Mark's nose as well. Quick! There's only one way in the whole wide world to save a red ripe strawberry from the big hungry bear. Cut it in two. Share half with me. Hmm. And we'll both eat it all up. Yum. Now that's one red ripe strawberry the big hungry bear will never get. The end. Hmm. Do you think there really was a big hungry bear? Maybe yes, maybe no. Oh well, Mouse looked pretty happy in that last picture. This is Little Mouse, the Red Ripe Strawberry, and the Big Hungry Bear. And when you come in the library, you will find it on the shelf along with a whole lot of other books by Don and Audrey Wood. A long, long time ago, 
Every summer, I did stories in Alexandria's Fort Worth Park. And we always ended our programs out there with a rhyme called Peanut Butter and Jelly. And I'm going to teach it to you today. So can you hold your hands with this? Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. First you take your peanuts and you smash them, you smash them. First you take your peanuts and you smash them, you smash them. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. Then you take your berries and you stomp them, you stomp them. Then you take your berries and you stomp them, you stomp them. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. Then you take your bread and you spread it, you spread it. Then you take your bread and you spread it, you spread it. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. Then you take your sandwich and you eat it, you eat it. Mm. Then you take your sandwich and you eat it, you eat it. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. Then you take your fingers and you lick them, you lick them. Then you take your fingers and you lick them, you lick them. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly, peanut, peanut butter, jelly, jelly. Oh, yeah. Good job. Do you like blueberries? When I was about your size, they were my favorite thing to eat in the summer. I wanted to eat them every single day. And I loved this book. And so did my daughter when she was two. This was probably her favorite book when she was two and we read it every night for quite a while. Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail, and her mother brought her large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we will have food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tin pail. Kaplink, kaplank, kaplunk. She picked three more berries and ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Cup plunk, and the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It didn't sound kaplink because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. Though she didn't really mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one she had put in. Her mother stopped picking and said, now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries, and then he had to hustle along to catch up. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and ate blueberries. 
Over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all the berries she could reach from where she was sitting, and then she started out to find her mother. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, that is my mother walking along. But it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and flew away, saying, go, go, go. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother, and I will go that way. Oh no, is that her mother? No, it was Little Bear's mother instead. She was tramping along, eating berries, and thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. He hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump and thought, that is my mother walking along. But it was a mother partridge and her children. They stopped eating berries and hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along, picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little Bear hustled right along behind. Little Bear and Little Sal's mother and Little Sal and Little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, eat all you can possibly hold. Swallow. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them, ka-plink, ka-plank, ka-plunk, in her small tin pail. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like ka-plunk. Grumph, she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where is Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. And then she turned around and walked off very fast to hunt for Little Bear. Little Sal's mother heard Little Bear tramping along behind and thought it was Little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Little Bear padded up and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few of what was inside, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. Now, Sal, said Little Sal's mother without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped, My goodness, you are not Little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. Then she turned and walked away quickly to look for Little Sal. She hadn't gone very far before she heard a ka-plink, ka-plank, ka-plunk. She knew just what made that kind of a noise. Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and full of food stored up for next winter. And Little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way, and drove home with food to can for next winter. A whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. 
I pulled this book out of the cover so that you could see the back illustration. This is the back of the book. And that's little Sal and her mother in their kitchen, probably on an island in Maine. And they are canning their blueberries for the winter. If you like this book, there is a sequel to it called One Morning in Maine. And in that book, little Sal is a little bit older and she has a baby sister named Jane. But this is Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. And you will find it on the shelf right here at the Alexandria Library. It's time to say goodbye, Allie. No, you don't want to say goodbye? Well, we'll be back next week. And we hope that we'll be seeing you here on YouTube. And even more importantly, we hope we'll be seeing you at the library. Thanks for watching. We love you. Bye. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Fruit salad.